All right, in this demo, I'm going to be showing how I'm implementing layers for the game design. And without further ado, I'll do a brief description. So what I showed in the last demo was the placing of different zones to comprise a level. And that allowed the artist to, you know, do a little bit of variation by having only a small number of zones that they can interchange and add a little bit of variety. But eventually that's going to get repetitive. If you have maybe eight or nine zones, it would be nice if you could have some other type of variation that would make things unique in the zones. And at first I was thinking, well, I could add assets from the assets tab and I could auto arrange them using some sort of algorithm that would do it randomly. But the issue I have with that is well, it's going to be random, so sometimes the assets would be arranged in an artistically pleasing fashion, and other times they would not. And it would be missing the artist's touch, because, you know, an artist with some skill will be able to orient assets in a way that helps the gameplay and just makes it aesthetically pleasing. So then I came up with the idea of uh, using the layers. So, for example, assuming I had more assets than what I'm what I have here that would, I don't know, have uh, gates or uh, pumpkins or pipes or, you know, just little assets that they can throw in the level. Um, so if I were to just set some assets in the level. Of course, when I, an artist would be able to do this much more eloquently than what I've done here. But this is just to give you an example. So I have my assets. Now this, if this is all I had every time I ran the level, you know, these assets would show up in exactly the same spot. I could maybe do some spawn points. Uh, but again, it's leaving it up to the luck of the draw in terms of randomness. It may look good or have good gameplay, but you know, you're letting the computer uh, decide. So the way to remove this um, in terms of chance and have, you know, well-placed assets every single time, but at the same time have them uh, have some sort of randomness is to use layers. So I could create, say, two layers. So I have layer zero and layer one. And then I can select all the assets that I've placed. Yeah, that's all of them. And I can do a layer membership and add them to layer zero. So now all these objects in the Explorer, these ones that I've selected are in layer zero. So if I wanted, I can see, and yeah, they're in layer zero. So now I want to have some sort of randomness when the game starts, but I sort of want what I would call artistic randomness. So I want it to always look good so the solution is I make layer zero disappear. It's still there. It's just I've decided to make it invisible. So now I can start again. And this time to do the random randomness, I'll we'll do some rotations. And I can have more or less assets if I wish. I'm just doing this as an example. here and a final one for good measure and again I do the same thing I put these on a separate layer layer membership and layer one I do an apply There I can make them disappear. But now when I do an export of this level, or at least when I write the code to do that, I'll know which objects are in which layer and I can do some pre-processing to um, 
to build to build what I need to export on the iPhone. And then when the level loads, it can pick between how, however many layers I've set up. And on top of that, I can have some scripting to just add a little bit more um, randomness by say running a script that will place in certain areas, uh, certain random objects, but at the same time, have the bulk of the assets placed in a sort of artistically pleasing way by the artist, but have different variations so that the level isn't exactly the same uh, when the player starts, but at the same time, it looks good every time. So I could have, you know, supposedly eight or 10 layers of variations, and then I could cycle through the layers to get some sort of randomness. And even though this is a horrific level, you can see the difference. Well, th there I have both layers up and running, but so make that disappear and that. So every time the level loads, uh, a different layer will potentially run and you can have a uh, a little bit of randomness. Of course, you'll be limited by the the number of uh, layers of randomness that you have, but the advantage is it'll look good every time. The other thing I've added, I don't know if this will help, but I decided to add it, was the ability to show the bounding box of everything in the scene. Maybe it's a, it's a nice debugging feature that someone might find useful. So, and it updates in real time as you rotate the uh, objects. And another option I added was changing the render mode. So if you want wireframe, you can look at the mesh. You can see it's fairly complicated. That's why I use a hierarchy to save the triangles in a in a binary tree because you really don't want to have to do tests uh, on this mesh just to find out that you clicked on, uh, say, this little triangle right here. You don't want to um, have to consider, say, all these thousands of polygons just to figure out, oh, it's in this area that I clicked. Uh, there, if I didn't do that, this would probably grind to a halt. So that's a nice... Um, feature I've added for changing the render mode so you can look at the complexities of the mesh. And this is definitely not a mesh that you would use on an iPhone, at least not the current versions. I don't think even the iPhone 6 would be able to use this. But that's what I've done uh, today. So I've set up the layers to allow the artist to um, have a little bit of randomness in the levels so that I can remove some of the monotony, but at the same time, I can uh, I can have uh, a limited amount of assets just to keep down uh, memory consumption, and also you know to get within the budget of what I want to spend for art assets, but at the same time, make it look like I have more assets than I really do by adding this type of variation. So that's it for now, and probably for the next video, I'm going to work on exporting the level in an iPhone-friendly format, and then have uh, have it display on the iPhone with a optimized scene manager for the type of game I'm trying to make. And I also hope to have a better level than what I'm showing here. I'll spend some time and try to do something nice but simple, and have it display on the iPhone. So till next time, I'll keep working until I get the next video up. Thanks and bye.